everyone good morning and welcome again to your channel learn data science with pranjal so in my previous two videos i have talked about hypothesis testing and the power of testing so continuing on the same line in this video i discuss another type of test which can be used to determine whether my data is normally distributed or not and the name of the this test would be jack barra test or people also call it as your jb test so normally many people don't know about this test what this jack barra test is and the properties of normal distribution also they are not aware of so normally people think that there is one property of the normal distribution that it should be symmetric around mean or mean should be equal to or median equal to mode but actually there are six properties of normal distribution so before conducting the jack barra test let's discuss the properties of the normal distribution and then probably we'll see how to conduct a jb test in our python so let's get started I have already created one slider on the normal distribution, which uh, where we can see the properties of a normal distribution. So these are the six properties which we need to remember uh, should be should be followed for the normal distribution. So the first property is that mean equal to median equal to mode. My mean should be equal to median, and median should also be equal to mode. It should be symmetric around mean. The skewness should be zero, and my distribution or the graph should be mesocortic. and that is your skewness should be equal to 3 and it should be asymptotic and then it should follow the rule of your 68 95 and 99.7 so let's discuss each properties separately so what does symmetric around mean mean so what does symmetric around mean implies so i have already drawn a small representation which you can see so basically in this graph you can see a dotted line in the first graph which represents your mean and the area on the left side of the mean and on the right side of the mean so basically your red region and your green region they should be mirror images of your mean that's the ideal scenario which we talk about and the area on the left side of the mean and area on the right side of the mean should be same and skewness should be zero so basically the, you can see the last two graphs where i've drawn so these two graphs are skewed graph so over in on the left hand side graph i have written is positive skewed for the right hand skewed why because that tail is on your right hand less so for left skewed or negative skewed so this would be your left skewed or you can also call it as your negative skewed the tail would be so this portion which i am marking as hash this portion tail is on your left hand side so it represents your left or the negative skewed and the very good example would be let's consider a exam a very easy exam where most of the candidates got very high marks and there were very few candidates who failed or probably got less marks so this type of distribution is not a normal distribution this is a, your skewed distribution in your normal distribution your skewness should be zero then the another property is that your distribution should be mesocortic so this blue graph over here indicates that your distribution is mesocortic there should not be a sudden peak so the red graph show, shows a sudden peak so it becomes your leptocortic so formula for cal calculating the kurtosis i have already written that is beta is equal to mu4 upon mu2 and now the question is what is mu4 mu4 is x minus mu by 6 whole power 4 mu2 is x minus mu by 2 whole square if mu4 by mu2 is a if your beta is around 3 then your distribution is called to be mesocortic if beta is more than 3 then it is called leptocortic and if beta is less than 3 then it is called platycortic and one more thing which we need to keep in mind is that your kurtosis can never be negative the least value can be zero and as such there is no upper limit of your kurtosis so for example your skewness can be positive it can be negative it can be zero but your kurtosis can never be zero now let's discuss our fifth and sixth property it should be asymptotic so what does this asymptotic means asymptotic implies that your graph will touch the axis at infinity so this property normally people do not check for it but it is actually a property that your graph should be touching at your infinity and then we have 68 95 and 99.7% rule so which means that there should be around 68% of the data within your one standard deviation 90 around 95% of your data within your two standard deviation or you can say within your 
six five standard deviation, and within your three standard deviation, there should be around ninety nine point seven percent of the data. So these properties are your. So these are the six properties of your normal distribution. Now let's do a JB test to test whether my distribution is normal or not. So, in interest of saving the time, I have already done. I have already written some necessary codes. So, doing the JB test in Python is actually quite easy. Import your pandas as PD. So, I'll read one external file. So, I've imported my pandas, and then from your stat models, import your jack para, which is already the inbuilt function in your Python. And then you import your numpy. So read this some lines which I have written on the JB test. So in JB test, your null hypothesis is fixed. You can't change the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis over here is that data is normally distributed. And when I say the data is normally distributed, basically there are two things which we can mathematically calculate: that your skewness should be zero, and your kurtosis should be equal to three. And if your kurtosis is around three, then it is known as your mesocortic. But if it's more than three, it would be known as your leptocortic. If it's less than three, it would be called platycortic. And since the null hypothesis is that skewness is zero and kurtosis is three, then alternate would be skewness is not zero and kurtosis is not three. If any one of them fails, then I will reject my null. So, for example, if my skewness is zero but kurtosis is not equal to three. Then also I will reject the null. It's not necessary that both the conditions fail. Even if one of the condition fails, then I will reject my null. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm reading one file that is your creditors file. So if you have already seen my previous video, probably you will understand what this creditors file is. So let me quickly run the head function to show you what this contains. So this contains one column as your income. So just now I have told that normally your income distribution is never. Symmetric. It's normally a right skewed because there would be few people who are earning very high amount. So I have written one piece of code. So I have written a describe function over here. I have written the percentiles. So if we study this thing, we can see that there are 50% of the population who are who is earning less than or equal to 3,800 dollars per month, and 90% of the people are earning less than or equal to 8,750. But that top 10% between 90 to 100%, we can see there is a almost 10 times more wealth is being held by that top 10%. And similarly, if I have done the plot on my applicant income, so on this plot, but from this plot also you can see that distribution is right skewed. Now let's do our Jagbara test. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying Jagbara, and I'm passing my applicant income. So when you when you so when you run your Jagbara test, it basically returns you four values. So first value is your calculated value. The second value is your p value, which is coming out to be 0.0 over here. The third value is your skewness of the data, and the fourth value is kurtosis of the data. So interpreting the result like this is quite difficult. So what I've done is I've written a small piece of program which will directly tell me whether my data is distributed or not, and it will give me the desired information also. So I have written this created a user defined program. I have said Jagbara program, and it takes one input. So this input would be any data set on which you want to run your program. And so at line number nine, I am giving call to my function. So when I give call to my function, it returns me these things. So calculated value of JB test is this much. P value is 0.0. The skewness of data is this much, 7.07. Kurtosis of data is 74. So from seeing this, probably we can say that my we need to reject a null, and similarly we get the same thing. Since my p value is less than 0.05, we will reject the null. And if we reject the null, then we will go with alternate. And if we go with alternate, then we have to conclude that my data is not normally distributed. So let me take another example where I will pass. A data, or I have created a data which is normally distributed. So I am making use of NumPy. So I am saying np dot random normal five point four and thousand. So basically, what I have done is I have created thousand numbers which are normally distributed with their mean is five and the standard deviation is point four. And if we do a plot on these numbers, on these thousand numbers, 
we can see our my distribution looks quite normally distributed now let's do the jagbera test so again i give a call to my jagbera program and i pass my normal distribution so at the end it says that since p value is more than 0.05 we fail to reject the null so we fail to reject the null which means that my null hypothesis is still valid and which means that my data is normally distributed and from the graph also probably we can see that my data is normally distributed so this brings us to the end of this knowledge video it was a small uh, knowledge video but it it has covered all the aspects of the normal distribution some properties which probably people do not know what uh, what could be the properties what what could be the whole properties of the normal distribution and then how to check the normal distribution so normally people only rely on the histogram or the distribution plot to check whether your no data is normally distributed but they fail to check the uh, kurtosis part which is also very important so if you do your jagbera test it will tell you based upon the hypothesis testing whether your data is normally distributed or not so thank you everyone for watching the video hope to see you soon in my next video till that time happy learning